you very much for everybody participating. It's really been a wonderful experience. Uh, the full participation was very encouraging for the heartbeat of democracy. That's something that uh, has been uh, seen to be failing in other parts of the world and uh, even in our own country on, on time to time. Over the conversations in which I participated, over and over again, the message was how the component parts of the region work together and how efficient, inclusive, and productive they can be. Communication has to take place, and too many people find their concerns slip between the cracks. It causes confusion, and it causes frustration. We have to address that, and election is the first step to addressing it. That does not necessarily mean another round of amalgamation in our region. We've seen that happen before in Cambridge, and the ramifications are still spilling out. What we have to do is we have to do things better. We can prove that if we do things better. Some of the things that we have to do is we have to collaborate better at the council level and within uh, the various communities that we have. We have to rework the bureaucracies. We have to rework the councils. You know, we've had uh, a regional, regional uh, tier government for 45 years now, and far too many times I'm walking up to uh, uh, constituents and they are totally confused as to who they should be addressing their, their issues to. My background is uh, uh, one that is involved in analysis and collaboration throughout its 40 years. That is something that we have to uh, look at directly um, in this new cycle, and uh, uh, that should address some of the uh, overwhelming issues that uh, we're experiencing right now in this community. There are big ones, affordable housing, uh, transit, uh, cycling, uh, drug abuse. These are not things that can or should be addressed by a single individual or a single level of council. Thank you. I would say this one is, uh, is, is at the top of the list. Uh, this has really been an excellent, uh, an excellent forum, and there's so much really to talk about, uh, trying to take away from what uh, was discussed at the tables, but I've, I've uh, centered down uh, on, uh, on three different things. And uh, it's been mentioned by a number of people, but affordable housing. Affordable housing is a, is a real theme, not just here today, but elsewhere uh, in the community. And you have to start uh, with some kind of a, a premise. And I start with the premise that uh, housing is a right uh, that individuals should have. And it was so nice to hear one of the participants at the table talk about uh, the lack of housing being a root cause of a whole variety of problems, including in the education, health, and even in the criminal justice system. So uh, it, we, we have to recognize it as such. So what do we do about it? Well, the region, believe it or not, has been recently recognized for being one of the most progressive municipalities uh, in, uh, in Ontario on this particular file, but there's so much more that we need to do to uh, lobby for more money, uh, to use surplus sites, and uh, one of the sites that is going to be coming up in surplus is the Charles Street Terminal, and I'm proposing for it to be an affordable, uh, affordable housing site uh, when the day comes that we are able to, uh, to, uh, to surplus it. And of course there's other things to do in terms of uh, dealing with uh, developers. As I cast my eyes over at the timer. Um, public engagement. Uh, this is a really interesting one. And while the region tries to do a good job, it's difficult sometimes to uh, to get uh, people engaged in, uh, in more diverse communities and, uh, and those that are marginalized. And one of the things we need to do is to be much more proactive. Often when we're looking for engagement, it's more of a passive thing. Go online, do this, do that, come to an open house meeting. We need to be more proactive in going out and getting that, uh, that, uh, that information. And quickly then, on social services, which of course comes up, um, 
a community is often measured by how we deal with the marginalized people in our community. So whether it's discretionary benefits or child care, uh, we need to be at the head of the, the line in terms of providing those services. The region has gone beyond provincial funding in some cases to provide those services, uh, and we need to continue to do that. So uh, I, I want to again thank Trinity and uh, St. Matthews for the forum here today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. And thank you all for coming out and uh, providing very great ideas. Um, I think the most important thing I'm taking away from today is the importance of public consultation, of listening to and dialoguing with the constituents. Of course we all know that, but as uh, Tom mentioned, it's good to be reminded of that and that we should be proactive in seeking it out. You do have some great ideas and share my passion for the future of our city and our region. I'm just going to quickly touch on a few of the things that I uh, talked about, that we talked about, that we discussed at our tables. Um, we talked about housing, about affordable housing, and it was great to hear your ideas and concerns about it and your recognition that it is a very serious problem in this region. But it was also great to hear you recognize that it isn't just subsidized housing that we need, that we need affordable housing for seniors, for families with young children, for first-time home buyers. Um, and, and we talked about ways that we could incentivize uh, developers to make sure that they include rent-controlled uh, units. We talked about uh, the safe consumption sites and that we need to find a way to move ahead with them, with or without the province. We talked about prioritizing snow clearing, not just for automobiles, but for pedestrians and cyclists and the users of public transit. We talked about how often snow gets dumped from the road into the, into the bus bays, into the places where people are waiting to catch, to catch their buses. Um, we discussed the need for safe and accessible streets for pedestrians and cyclists and users of public transit and users of horses and buggies, not just for automobiles. We talked about the need for community policing. Rather than spending more on our police, we need to get our police out of their cars, out from behind their desks and onto the streets. I think Chief Larkin has demonstrated that well and we need to keep moving forward with that. Um, it, it, it was... I think my time's running out. <laughs> it was great to hear you talk about community. I think the biggest thing that we're facing in this region is we are a rapidly growing area. Um, we still have the sense that we're a small town, and if we work properly, we can, we can deal with that. Um, I think you talked about the importance of community, how important it is for people to feel that they belong. I think that can help address many of our problems um, and I believe we can do this if we focus on social compassion and environmental sustainability in everything that we do. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you for having me. It was really great to have a discussion. Yeah, I know. I always forget and I put it down too far. <laughs> Um, so I was really glad to be involved in a discussion like this because it's always nice to hear from the public instead of just always giving speeches. It makes us a little bit more engaged and I find that really interesting. So the key issues that I found were affordable housing, transit, green space, talking about developers, and then the opioid crisis. That seemed to be kind of a continual thread through all of the tables that I visited. Um, one of the key things that uh, people were talking about were programming and services and how um, we can work together at multiple levels because as we know, even if I'm at the regional level, there's people in the province and the federal government that we would have to work with to get funding for grants, um, and how do we make these services work, and how do we um, get everyone to work together to make it um, work um, from every level. Um, so one of the other things is we need to keep asking questions, like what are some of the barriers and limitations that exist to providing some of these programs and services? So we need to keep... Um, educating and communicating with the public and within all levels of government. So some of the other things that people were talking about were um, it's there's some key aspects and attitudes that run through all these issues. There can also be legislative barriers, so how can we change these to be effective? 
a lot of people were talking about stigma and NIMBY, and these can be barriers um, even when talking with community members and um, different levels of government, different organizations. So how do we change the attitudes of NIMBY and stigma? Um, we always need to keep looking at the big picture and look at how these issues relate. So specifically for transit, they said there are supports and subsidies available, but is it enough? Can we do more? Are there more people that actually need these services that aren't getting them? And how can we fund these? Um, for housing, there's um, more supports, more units, and we want us to look outside the box um, and build communities, not just spaces. So how do we integrate these ideas? <laughs> I always talk too fast and then... <laughs> Uh, so also, how do we keep developers accountable after the building has happened? So maybe um, getting uh, someone suggested getting condo boards involved and how everyone um, can communicate together after the development has happened and it's kind of hands off at the government level. Um, and then also more programming for things like out of the cold and I suspect probably in the future out of the, the heat because we're getting hotter summers and um, colder winters. Um, so also, uh, how do we integrate neighborhoods? and how can we get more community members engaged and involved, so either creating green spaces, um, just small initiatives like painting, or um, building gardens, and getting everyone to be together. So I think that the little things are important and everyone matters, and that seems to be the thread that we've come across today. And then how can we um, be engaged, coordinate, listen, and then we always need to keep asking questions. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it couldn't be more powerful for me to come here and stand here as a candidate and talk to you because I have been attending these forums from the other side, the citizen representing the citizenry and asking questions from the, from the candidate. I also couldn't help but remembering Trudy at this time and how, uh, you know, tireless advocate and for all kinds of social justice causes she was and uh, it's great to be living in a community where we had leaders like Trudy and now Alexandra. So with this I want to say that I'm very, very humble to be standing here as a person who made this community their home about 18 years ago as a newly arrived immigrant. And my love for this community has made me very passionate about all the issues facing this community, but also the opportunities that we see when we work together. And as several people have talked about, different levels of government, business sector, and citizens, all of us working together really, really um, is what made me make me passionate about um, uh, the community. I'm running because, like all of you, I also want a vibrant, diversified, and sustainable economy but I also want a very strong social safety net with this. I want housing that is accessible for all income levels. I want a public transit system that can keep vehicles off the road. I also want a community where everyone feels welcome and belonged. And I want decision making that is triple bottom line. Socially compassionate, fiscally responsible, and environmentally sustainable. <laughs> So we tend to hear dominant voices, louder voices all the time, more organized voices. We don't necessarily get to hear what we heard here today. And I think it's time that our regional council actually has these voices on the table. So what I heard most is affordable housing and low income or poverty. And I would say that my vision is that we have a community where we grow together. So we have an economy which is vibrant, diversified, and innovative. It creates while paying jobs. We have thriving small businesses. All of this will give us more income, more increased tax base. And we want to make sure that we have a very strong social safety net. We have supportive wages. We have fair income practices. We have job skills training. We have fair benefits for people on fixed incomes. And especially we have affordable quality childcare for people who are looking for work. And housing is the other piece, and a lot of people are, have already talked about housing. I would just repeat that we really need to work together, and one of the participants on my table actually passed this just before I'm leaving, and she said that I should share this, that not only the government would be able to find a solution or all levels of government find a solution for housing thing. We need to bring the community together, businesses, business, government, and citizens together to, to um, solve the problem of the affordable housing. Thank you very much. 
Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Clark and I'm running for re-election to council representing Kitchener. Um, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at my website, I'm sure most of you have, um, and if you haven't, please do. If you look at my website, you'll see that I have a number of priorities and a number of issues that I've been working on and, and, um, and consider priorities for the next term of council. But before I came here this morning, I was working on a questionnaire that a local paper had sent where we were asked all candidates to give two priorities and to talk about our strategies for those two priorities in a hundred words for both of them. So I, I found that very challenging uh, for two reasons. One is that I'm a very wordy person, but the other one is that there are many issues facing us and many issues that I'd like to work on. But it was a good challenge because it gave me the opportunity to think uh, deeply about the issues that I feel most passionate about and the ones that I feel I'm best uh, positioned to contribute to because of, of uh, who I am and, and um, where I work and where my skills are. My vision is for a region where our most vulnerable residents are supported and included and where our environment, our fragile environment, is protected and preserved. My priorities, and I was gratified to hear at the tables uh, today that uh, these are the priorities of many of you, certainly, are around uh, addressing our homelessness crisis that we have in our community and our supervised consumption uh, services, as well as um, our, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. So we have, uh, and you will notice that I actually cheated on my questionnaire. I actually identified three priorities, but I grouped two of them together so I could uh, um, submit them properly and please read the newspaper article and see if you can find where I cheated. We have uh, more people in our homeless shelters than we have ever had before. We have more people sleeping rough in the community than we've ever seen before. We talked about the need for housing. Um, I would add to that that we need supportive housing. People who are uh, chronically homeless require much more than just affordable housing, which has been well uh, discussed by other candidates. We need a way to uh, uh, deal with our opioid crisis. We need a way to keep people alive and link them to services that, that we need. And uh, before my time runs out, I will just say that uh, I think the magic bullet, if Region has a magic bullet, is public transit. Affordable public transit, transit that is, that is functional, uh, not just protects our environment by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and driving development in the urban cores, but it also relieves poverty and it breaks down social isolation. So uh, I would say transit is my, is my second or third, depending on how you count it, priority. So uh, that's all I have to say, and thank you again to the uh, Social Development Centre for hosting this event. Thank you.